lot of personalities in that room. Uh, but they're good guys. And, and uh, what I've been most impressed about them is, you know, they come to work every day. And uh, there's plenty of corrections that we're going to have to make. But they're competing and playing hard. And, and that's uh, if they do that, we're going to have a chance to be pretty good. What do you think the biggest difference is between being an offensive analyst and an actual position coach? Um, for one, i got to run the meeting every day with the receivers. And then, uh, uh, you know, the other thing is, is it's just a little more on-field on field responsibility. As an offensive analyst, uh, it's more of an off-field duty, kind of uh, watch from far, see what needs to be corrected, kind of talk with the coaches, try to get it, get it corrected. Um, you know, on the, as, a, as a full-time coach more, uh, you're responsible for a group of guys on the field every day. So uh, you got to get the guys, uh, you know, know, know what they're supposed to do and do it right. So, uh, but like I said, I'm proud of how they've played so far. And then, uh, they're doing plenty of correction, but, but we're not going to correct playing hard. I mean, so far they've played hard, and that's what we're working for. We're working with the quarterbacks I saw over there. Uh, what did you like about them, um, like Paul and uh, Bender? Um, you know, they've done a really good job, and, and uh, what I've been the most impressed about with those two guys is just uh, how willing they are to put in, you know, extra time and stuff like that, and that's that's uh, that's important. As a quarterback, uh, you know, in this offense especially, you gotta you got to be a guy that's willing to put in a lot of extra work and, and uh, lead a unit, and uh, both those guys have done a really good job of that, and that's... Uh, you know, when you have a quarterback that's willing to do the extra work, it sends a sign and it sends a message to the whole team and, and gives you a chance to be good. It was only a couple games with Luke to get a couple of games last year in the season, but as a quarterback who knows the offense, what's it like to even get a couple games in before you go into the next season? Oh, it's huge, and uh, just just feeling more comfortable. Again, and, and, you know, you're gonna make some mistakes, especially early in your career, and and uh, hopefully, you know, with Falk. You know, he, he had a chance to get some of the mistakes out uh, last year. So uh, he did a really good job. He did a heck of a job coming in there. And, he, you know, that Oregon State goes in and wins his first game. It's a great number. But, uh, you know, just getting experience, you can't replace that. You can, you know, as much fame as you want to watch, as much, no, no matter what you want to do, as much practice reps as you can get, uh, nothing replaces real game experience. And, uh, you know, in this offense especially, the more reps you get, just the better, better you get, the more mastery you want to have in the offense. And uh, so, so with Falk doing that, uh, that, that's going to be huge for his, you know, for him moving forward and for uh, the offense. Other, thank you, Evan. Uh, other than Dom and Gabe, who has caught your eye this year, and how so? Uh, well, honestly, we're pretty slim out there, but but uh, Dan Lilenthal's done a heck of a job. Uh, Zaire's made leaps and bounds improvements from uh, last fall, you know, and so, so I'm glad to see that. And then we got uh, Calvin moves to the outside. Priester, who we just got this this semester, he's going to be a super talented kid. He's he's a great player, um, you know, and he's going to have to sit out for a year, but but he's going to be a special player. And then you know Barry, uh, you know he's big. You can't you can't teach size, you know what I mean. So so having him out there is going to be big for us too. But as a unit, they've all done good, and we don't have a ton of ton of depth out there, so we need him to stay healthy. But as a you know, honestly, they've all done a heck of a job so far in just two days. I was going to ask, uh, you know, you were with spring practices with leagues back at Texas Tech. What are maybe some of the similarities and differences of how spring practices are run here versus there? Structure-wise, none. You know, he hasn't changed anything <laughs> in, shoot, I don't know how long he's been coaching, but in his however long he's been coaching, probably 30 years, he hasn't changed anything. But, um, you know, the one thing that I've, that I've been proud of so far the first few practices, and like I, I said earlier, um, it's starting to look more like the Tech days, I think, were just how hard they're competing, you know what I mean? And that's... That's just, I think, coaches, you know, sending that message that everything we do we're going to compete in. And so uh, I think that this team's really buying into that. And so these first two practices, that's what it's supposed to look like, competitive, playing hard, playing fast, and stuff like that. And we're going to make mistakes, but don't make mistakes because we're playing slow. You know what I mean? Make mistakes because you didn't know what to do, you ran the wrong route or whatever. But do it full speed and we'll be all right. And I think that's what they've done so far. You guys good? Thanks, Grant. Thank you. I thought y'all.